Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Anyways, hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today, I'm going to be showing you this absolutely lovely Game Boy Micro that I bought recently. But, as you may have noticed in the title, there is a very, very small issue. Well, there is an issue with it, and um, I'll get to that in a little bit. But, as you might remember if you watched my previous video, I ordered a bunch of stuff from Japan. This was one of the items that I got from a seller on a Japanese auction website. It was this beautiful Game Boy Micro here, and this nice little bag of games. So let's look at the games first and we will talk about this guy in a few minutes. So let's just push this off to the side for now. So the games came packaged like this and also there's a charger in here as well, which is very nice because I wasn't really clear if it was coming with a charger or not, but let's move that out of the way and look at the bounty of games that we have here. So let's just start pulling them out. We've got a Full Metal Alchemist game, very cool. I love Full Metal Alchemist, so that's nice. I honestly don't remember a lot of the games that came with this, so it's gonna be kind of a surprise for me as well. Oh, this is a Dragon Quest Monsters game. Never played this one, but I do love the uh, original couple of Dragon Quest Monsters games, so that's cool. I actually already have a, a few of these games. I know I already have like complete in box from when I was living in Japan, so you know, it's cool to have extras, but Honestly, this bundle was just such a good deal. I didn't really care that I was gonna be getting some duplicate games. So uh, here we have the very first WarioWare, or in Japan, it was called Made in Wario. Very cool. Uh, that's a good one to play if you don't know Japanese, but wanna collect Japanese games. We have Wario Land 4, another Wario game. Mario & Luigi RPG, or as we know this in the West as Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, one of my favorite games of all time, absolutely love this one. Oh cool, I actually completely forgot about this. The first Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, that's cool. I love how they had a shiny label for this game in Japan. I don't think the Western one had this. I mostly played the DS version of this, but... I don't think our Western version of Red Rescue Team had a label like this, so that's really cool to see. What else? Oh, we have another Full Metal Alchemist game. I actually have never played any of these Full Metal Alchemist games on the GBA, so I don't know if they're like action games or RPGs, but they'll be interesting to check out for sure. We have, oh, Yoshi's Topsy Turvy. I remember I was really excited for this game when I was a kid, and I thought the tilting the cartridge to move Yoshi around was cool at first, but then I remember actually getting kind of sick of it and never finishing it. But um, maybe I'll have to go back to it uh, and try to play it through from beginning to end. And who knows, maybe I'll like it more these days. We have a baseball game. I know these are very popular in Japan. I never really tried them, but maybe I'll try that one now. We have a Mickey Mouse game. Uh, I don't think this ever came to the States. That'll be interesting. I think it might be a port of a Super Nintendo game as well. So that's cool. We have Starfy 2. This is another one I have in the box from when I was living in Japan, but still cool. Oh, here's some, some big ones at the bottom here. Well, here's Kingdom Hearts. Very nice, and that's like one of the only Kingdom Hearts games I never played. Actually, that's not true. There's a few that I haven't played. Zelda, this is the remake of A Link to the Past that came with the first Four Swords Adventures, so that's very nice to have. The Zelda games in Japan are actually pretty expensive as well, so you'll see here we also got a copy of Minish Cap, so I mean, it's pretty cool. I still haven't played Minish Cap. It's one of the few Zelda games I haven't played, so excited to one day get into that one. And here we have a very nice shiny copy of Pokemon Ruby, which in a separate video, I'm gonna pop this in and see what kind of Pokemon this person had. So stay tuned if you want to see that. So moving on to the Game Boy Micro itself, I briefly showed this in my last video. It is in really good condition for the most part. I did go ahead and pop off the faceplate here and I wiped the dust that was underneath the screen. 
uh, got rid of all that stuff. And you'll see there is, uh, you'll, you might notice it when the screen is actually on, but there is one tiny scratch on the screen that I didn't notice that you can see when you're playing games, which is unfortunate. But here you have the Mario 20th anniversary Famicom style Game Boy Micro. And I remember seeing this thing in like Nintendo magazines all the time when I was a kid and just on the internet and stuff. And I always wanted this specific model so bad. And now I finally have it. I paid $220 for this whole bundle and all the games you see here, which really isn't bad. I was actually really happy with this purchase. I felt like I got a really good deal until after filming my previous video, I popped in a game and was testing it out. Let's put in Kingdom Hearts because it's really easy to notice with Kingdom Hearts. So, you know, it plays fine. Everything looks good. The buttons feel good. They all work. Everything's good. But you'll see when we move uh, the camera, I guess, a little bit. That's so if you look, sorry. Yeah. If you look right there, right above my finger, that might look like a piece of dust, but it's not. It's actually a dead pixel. And it's not noticeable like when you're in light, light colored areas like this, so you can't see it at all. But whenever there's like a dark background or something, it looks like there's a little piece of dust there, but that is a dead pixel and it will always be there unless I get the screen replaced. So that's actually very upsetting. I read the description of this item very carefully and I did not see any mention of that. I don't know if it was damaged while it was being shipped here to Australia. I don't know what the heck happened because they didn't have any pictures of this thing with the screen on. So I just assumed that everything was fine. And that really stinks. But I mean, otherwise it's in like near perfect condition. So yeah, that's really disappointing. I don't know how much it costs to replace a screen on a Game Boy Micro or if that's even a thing that people do. But either way, I am just really happy to own this. I've always wanted this. And honestly, it's more just a piece for my personal collection more than anything, you know, I have another Game Boy Micro that I bought while I was in Japan. It's the blue Final Fantasy IV one. And honestly, I don't really love playing games on this thing that much anyway, so it doesn't bother me a lot, but it is still a little bit disappointing. So yeah. So while it is a bit disappointing that this thing does have a little dead pixel on the screen, overall, I can't be too upset because it is in really good condition. And honestly, it is more just a collection piece than something I was actually going to, you know, seriously be playing a lot of games on. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at this Game Boy and thank you for watching and stay tuned because I'm going to be taking a closer look at a lot more stuff in my collection in the weeks and months and years to come. Uh, and I also have a new series planned where I'm gonna be taking a look at the save files on games in my collection, starting with some Pokemon games that I got from Japan. We're gonna pop them into the console, see what's on them, see what kind of Pokemon the previous owner had. So anyways, guys, stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.